Okay, so here is a preliminary step that I do sometimes, not all the time. I'm going to soak um, quinoa. I have two kinds of quinoa. One's a red quinoa, one's a white quinoa. And I have something called amaranth, which is not so common, but it's uh, another healthy option to rice or pasta. Let me flip around in the screen so I can see what I'm doing. Here is the red quinoa and the white quinoa. Alright, and here's the amaranth. It's a very small seed. I have the strainer because I like to rinse the quinoa under the running tap. So I'm just using a little bit of each because I'm only feeding one person and this will be enough for two meals. So there's the white quinoa and we'll go over to the sink uh, sorry, I'm doing everything with one hand since my other hand is holding the camera. So it's a quick rinse. Shake all the water off. So today, tonight, I'm going to be soaking it in this red liquid. It's from uh, the video we did earlier today. It's a chicken broth with vegetables and it's it's red because beetroot was one of the vegetables that we cooked today with the chicken. So this is gonna go in here once I turn off the video and have both hands I'll be able to clean off that remaining bit of quinoa and here is the amaranth you can see it's a really fine seed quinoa is also a seed which is what makes it better healthier than uh, white rice and probably the other rice as well rice is I don't think is a word when you mix it around And uh, the amaranth takes a bit to absorb the water enough. So mixing it and then I'll close the lid and uh, cook it tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, we'll probably add some vegetables as well with the dish. And uh, that's about it for now. Okay, it's the next day, almost lunchtime. Uh, the quinoa, the two kinds of quinoa, red and white, and the amaranth have been soaking overnight. And a bit longer since it's almost lunchtime. Uh, what I didn't mention last night was the amaranth. I couldn't rinse it under the water because the seeds are so small that it goes through the mesh of my strainer. The holes are too big. Uh, so that's why I didn't rinse it. You can rinse it the day after, after the seeds have absorbed some of the water because they get bigger. Here I have some water, about half a jar, so not a lot, because I don't think that's going to be enough liquid to cook properly the seeds. Uh, I'm going to add in this boiling water uh, almost half a teaspoon of pink salt and then I'm going to add this chicken veggie broth and the seeds. Trying not to make a mess. The seeds about doubled in size overnight. 
Don't drop the container. Little splash. Now, if uh, you need to be specific with your measurements, one thing I'm trying to show is measurements don't need to be so specific. But usually, and it'll say most of the time on the bag that you that is holding the seeds, the, the bag that you bought, it'll say what these precise measurements are. Usually, it's one to two, you know, one part seed, two parts water or liquid. I never measure. I can judge by cooking time. I, I know when these seeds have not been soaked overnight, it takes about 25 minutes. So as I'm watching, as I'm stirring, as the time goes by, if there's not enough water, then I'll add more water. If there's too much water, then it becomes a little bit soupy. Uh, and I can leave it that way, or I can add something that will absorb the liquid. Uh, one time in one of these videos, I added sea algae in powdered form, which absorbed some of the liquid. Lots of powders you can add. Many of the powders are better when they are not cooked. They maintain their nutritional properties. So now that's going to come to a boil and because I soaked it overnight, it should only take about 15 minutes. Uh, I checked online in between these two segments and uh, just to find out what reasons there would be to soak these kinds of seeds overnight. And the main reason is to get rid of the bitter taste, which can also be done by rinsing. Uh, and there's something, I don't remember the name, but something gets removed from the seeds during this overnight soaking process. And it also allows for better digestion. Uh, the water gets much deeper into the seed before the cooking process which makes it easier on the body to digest, incorporate and turn it into human because that's what's happening the food you're eating turns into human oh. uh, so that's gonna cook for about 15 minutes and uh, next time I come back I'll show you how I serve it I think this is important enough to have this as the main portion of the video uh, because uh, it's a much healthier option than your rice, potato, pasta. Uh, many people when they're trying to decide what to make for dinner, you think to yourself what should we have for a side dish? And one of the most common in North America is potatoes as the side dish. Uh, sometimes you want to make things different, you add rice. Um, so this is a very easy alternative and it's much healthier than those potato rice pasta. So uh, we're going to come back. Uh, you can see on the bottom right of your screen I have a grill. Uh, first thing is why do I have a grill in my kitchen because it's an outdoor kitchen I have a brick wall about this high you can see behind here this is the brick wall all the way around this specific side has a bamboo fence but this whole side is wide open so it, like an outdoor kitchen uh, there's uh, beautiful plants here with these awesome red flowers and every day, about 20 times a day, I see and hear hummingbirds. I can hear them. Uh, they, they make a sound. So I can look every time and watch hummingbirds feed from those flowers. So an outdoor kitchen, which is why I can have a grill. And why do I have the grill? Because we made bread earlier. But unfortunately, the battery life of the camera, it only recorded the first nine minutes. So we're going to have to do it again. But here's the bread. The, the cooking process uh, smells great. 
I'll lift it up. Yeah. Um, because of the cooking process using the grill instead of an oven, uh, about halfway through the cooking process, this one took 45 minutes before the batter became solid enough that I could remove it from the bread tin, which is what it's resting on. This bread tin, and I made this protective coating, which I explained really well in the video, to protect the bread pan. So we'll do it again. Now I'm calling it bread, but it's not the traditional bread. Uh, because there's no yeast and there's not so much wheat flour. There's lots of other powders, alfalfa, sacha inchi, which would be similar to almond flour, and a few others. We'll do it again. Uh, so the quinoa and the amaranth and the bread will be part of my dinner. And here to take advantage of the coals that are still a little bit hot, I have broccoli and red pepper. Uh, which I will continue to prepare in a frying pan probably with a little bit of butter to give it some flavor. And also I've read uh, in Dr. Mark's book uh, many vegetables need some kind of fat or oil to allow the body to digest it properly. So that's going to be also part of my lunch. Uh, so we'll come back when this is done and when I have my plate ready and uh, it'll be a good lunch. Homemade bread, quinoa amaranth, and a couple of veggies. Yeah, so everything's ready. Here's my plate. Let me come to the screen to show you. Not the screen, the camera. So here is the broccoli and the red pepper. Here's the two kinds of quinoa and amaranth. And here's the homemade bread, which is not actually bread. It's more like uh, an unsweetened cake batter because it doesn't have yeast. Uh, I use baking soda instead of yeast to give it some uh, fluffiness. So it's more like an um, unsweetened sponge cake. Uh, and I said I was going to cook the broccoli and pepper in a frying pan, but I didn't because it's cooked enough. Uh, so I added avocado oil on top and a little bit of salt and same with the quinoa and the amaranth can you hear it there's a hummingbird feeding from the flower uh, and he rests on one of the branches of the orange tree that's right beside it where was I? the quinoa and amaranth it was a, a little bit liquidy but not too bad there's a bit left over and in between now and my next meal it's going to absorb the rest of the water but because there was a little bit too much I added a powder and I'll show you which one I added this is new a friend gave this to me a couple weeks ago we were together for another friend's birthday and she wanted to use this uh, in the pizza dough instead of wheat flour but she never got around to it so she gave me one of the packages she had and I've tried it uh, it's uh, one of those superfoods, uh, very nutritious, easy to digest. I've tried it in pancakes and bread, uh, but this is one of those that I mentioned I think is better raw. So I took a tablespoon and I added it to the seeds, and now it's perfect consistency with the added nutrition of this superfood in powdered form. I also tried the bread and it's tasty. I like this kind of bread. Dominant flavor is probably the alfalfa because I put a tablespoon of alfalfa flour. So that's it. Uh, I do have a list of stuff that I would like to share but I'll just share two of them. Uh, one of them we've already reviewed. It's about the Teflon pan but I forgot to say one important thing about taking care, proper care of the uh, Teflon pen. And that's the cleaning method, the cleaning sponge. Here I have a sponge that has yellow on one side, green on the other. The green is the more abrasive side. 
this is the side I'll never use on the actual Teflon coating. I'll use it to clean the sides, the, the rim, and I'll use it to clean the bottom, but I'll always use the softer sponge side to clean uh, the, the inside part. And if you haven't seen the other video uh, about proper care for Teflon pen, num num number one is to use something that won't scratch. This is perfect. This is good. And this is okay as well. Just provided there's no sharp edges that are created from its use. This is brand new. It came uh, as a free gift when I bought the, the big frying pan uh, about six months ago. Um, and the other part uh, is once that Teflon starts to chip or flake away, um, it's advised not to use it anymore. Uh, not to use that frying pan because the Teflon that's chipping away will become part of your food and then you'll eat it. Uh, so uh, that was the three things about Teflon pen. And the other thing I want to say is uh, <clears throat> sports drinks and soda have similar amounts of sugar. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the sports drinks also have salt, uh, and they have a lot of sugar. I don't know exactly, but let's just say there's seven tablespoons, seven tablespoons of sugar in your can of Coke, 355 mils, and same with the sports bottle, seven tablespoons of sugar trying to get the awareness into you uh, hopefully it'll help you minimize or stop drinking this stuff seven tablespoons of sugar imagine taking the same quantity of water and putting seven tablespoons of sugar and drinking it uh, would you be able to drink a glass of 355 mils of water with seven tablespoons uh, imagine it that's how much sugar is in the soda uh, and the sports drinks very similar amounts of sugar um, really not healthy uh, uh, so try and avoid those drinks I, I know that pro sports stars do lots of advertisements commercials with these sports drinks so many people think it's a healthier option but it's not uh, the sports drink is necessary only if you're in a situation where it's extremely hot uh, and you need that salt. Uh, the electrolytes, maybe that's the healthy part if the sports drinks contain electrolytes. I was walking in an airport one time, I think the Chicago airport, I don't remember, and I was close enough to two other young men uh, as they were walking as well. I was close enough to overhear their conversation. The one guy who was speaking uh, about 100 pounds overweight, almost 50 kilos overweight. He was explaining to his friend, uh, yeah, I stopped drinking soda, I only drink sports drinks, about three or four a day. So, imagine three or four times seven tablespoons of sugar. Uh, I wasn't at a position in my life that I was willing to explain to him uh, the mistake or the incorrect information he had. So I didn't say anything. Um, but that's just an example of how much information is not clear uh, because of various methods of transporting transferring the information to us. Um, water. Water is great. Uh, Dr. Mark says all we need is water to supply the body with enough liquid. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say. This is a short video and I'm going to eat my awesome lunch. 
and uh, enjoy the weather. Yesterday it rained all day, sometimes it was really heavy. The river that's right here swell, swelled up, swelled up, swelled up overnight and it was uh, a lot noisier than usual and also brings down with it a lot of the mud as everything collects into this river. Now it's sunny, everything's drying and uh, perfect time for lunch. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Ah, uh, we're back. It's dinner time and I wanted to give a conclusion to this video give you another idea of how to prepare a meal with the quinoa and the amaranth. Here I have um, those three seeds as we prepared earlier in the video and in the frying pan using the same method we've done a few times uh, I put a little bit of oil, a little bit of water first to go in was purple cabbage, just a small wedge and then I chopped up into small pieces as well as a small piece of cauliflower uh, that cooked for about five minutes and then I added spinach and a small handful of pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and that cooked for about a minute and then I turned the heat off I added the leftover quinoa and amaranth just to heat it through uh, two pinches of salt a little bit of olive oil and I've got it on my plate now with half of an avocado the first half I ate for breakfast and I also have two pieces of the homemade bread using the grill using hot coals and if you can see it uh, there's the avocado the bread there's a bit of liquid which is going to be perfect to be soaked up with the bread and there it is so this is my dinner you could do something similar, but I also wanted to add in the process, you, you can prepare meat. Um, while the quinoa is cooking, you can put chicken, small pieces of chicken breast, or you, you can even use a chicken drum or chicken thigh. Same thing for ground beef, same thing for pork. Uh, I have mentioned a few times, if you have uh, a bigger family you're going to need a bigger frying pan but that's a bit of ignorance on my part um, I realize today you don't need a frying pan you can also use a large enough saucepan uh, and ideal if it has some kind of lid or some way to cover to keep the heat inside and allow for the steaming process so I thought that was important and another the last important thing is this quinoa and amaranth, you can have it for breakfast instead of oatmeal. The oats that most people buy, as far as I've seen, are the, the milled oats. They've been chopped up. It's not the whole oat flake. Uh, they're sometimes called quick oats, minute oats, microwave oats. Um, many times you get that box with the 10 individual packets inside. Um, instead of having oats, which is not as healthy as we've all been led to believe because it becomes sugar very quickly once it enters your stomach. Instead of the oats, you can do something like this, quinoa and amaranth. Soak it the night before, uh, as I explained at the beginning of the video, using just water. And then in the morning when you wake up, in the saucepan, boil the water and put it in. In about 15 minutes it'll be ready. You can add nuts, you can add seeds. A lot of people like to add banana or blueberry. Um, just remember the important thing with every meal is to have it balanced between the sugars and the nut sugars. So for example, an oatmeal breakfast with a banana, with fresh or dried blueberries. Uh, it's a lot of sugar be much more balanced if you would add for example peanut butter or other nuts uh, or seeds sometimes I will also add an egg when it's done cooking if I am lucky enough to find farm fresh eggs which I think are okay to eat raw if you trust where they're coming from 
Um, I will crack the egg into the oatmeal porridge and stir it and cover the lid and let it sit for at least 15-20 minutes um, because otherwise the oatmeal is too hot. And in those 15-20 minutes that raw egg partially cooks. Um, if it's a farm factory egg I wouldn't eat it raw. I would make sure it's cooked. Uh, and I don't add those to my oatmeal. Luckily today, the neighbor, she's got chickens. She was able to sell me four farm, farm fresh eggs that I'll eat in the next few days. Uh, also to mention, this bread has to be eaten fairly quickly. So within a day and a half, I'm going to finish all those 10 slices, which are this size. Uh, because I don't have a fridge, there's no preservatives. It's all natural. Uh, so that's uh, the conclusion. I'm looking forward to my dinner and um, go go to the bulk. You know, instead of buying the big package, sorry, you just got a, an idea. Go to a bulk food store uh, where you can buy just a small bit, and that way you can try it. Uh, instead of having to buy the bigger bag which would be more expensive and later you find out you don't like it. Um, and I also remembered another important thing, oatmeal, also instead of the oatmeal you can use buckwheat which sounds like it's wheat but it's closer related to the rhubarb family. Uh, that's a bit healthier than oats, also millet is a, another good option. Uh, instead of the oats. We will do an oatmeal porridge uh, because I believe it's important enough that I want to show you this method to make your oatmeal porridge breakfast um, more balanced, uh, healthier and a better start to your day.